night may be long and the dark may be deep, but the answers are there to be found. Whether it's the normal, the abnormal, or the paranormal, you're in the right place. Let's go beyond reality. Welcome to the program. Great to have everybody along with us. Is it Friday yet? No, it's Thursday, but that's okay because we have a great guest for you tonight. A first-time guest, in fact. We're excited to have Denise Marie join us in just a little bit. Denise is a psychic medium. She's going to talk about her work, her experiences, the readings that she gives, and uh, how long this uh, gift of hers has been active. It's a pretty interesting story. I'm excited to have her on the show. Uh, We've been working on getting her on for a while, so it'll be great and looking forward to having it. Now, I've got to say something, and for those of you watching the YouTube stream, you know that I'm still wearing fleece. We are in May. I still come into my studio and have to turn on the little portable heater. And I'm a, I'm one of these warm-blooded guys. I'm usually uh, overheated. I'm usually too hot. But that has not been the case this spring at all. We've had one day that's been mildly comfortable, maybe two, into the 60s. We should be in 70s, close to 80 by now. And we're in the 40s. In fact, we are going to get snow, I think, tomorrow night. I think it's going to drop so the high in the next couple of days. I don't know which day it's going to be. Is going to be in the 30s. These are the times that try men's souls, to quote a very famous line. Anyway, uh, enough complaining about the weather because you could do it all year long. Too hot, too cold, too rainy, too dry, whatever. There's always always something to complain about. Um, I do have uh, just a couple other things I want to mention. Uh, Facebook is uh, a great place for you to find out what we've got going on on the program So if you swing by the uh, Beyond Reality Radio Facebook page and give it a follow or a like, whatever you do these days, we'd appreciate that. Plus, uh, my personal page, or my fan page, J.V. Johnson, is a great place to keep track of what we have going on. Hello to everybody in our YouTube chat. Hello to everybody in our Twitch chat. Great to have everybody along with us for tonight's program. Let's go to break, and let's uh, get our guest. Again, Denise Marie will be joining us, psychic medium Denise Marie. And we'll be talking about her work as a psychic medium right here on Beyond Reality. Please support the program. Go to patreon.com slash Johaw. That's J-O-H-A-W. Welcome to the program, everyone. It's great to have you along. We have a great one lined up for you tonight. We're excited to have psychic medium Denise Marie on the program with us. Just so you know, her website is Halo, H-A-L-O, HaloReadings.com. Denise, welcome to Beyond Reality. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I got that right, correct? HaloReadings.com? Yeah, absolutely, yes. And uh, just before we get started here, that website uh, offers information about you, what you do. It lets people schedule sessions, right? You can do everything right on the website. It's extremely user-friendly, yes. Yes, you can schedule everything right there. So you are in New Jersey. I have to ask you, have you weathered <laughs> weathered this COVID storm that we've all been dealing with, and hopefully you're safe? Is everything good where you are? You know, I got to be honest, I think I had it at the end of February. Oh, seriously? Um, Yeah, but it was before, you know, before the actual pandemic, you know, really hit us and they, you know, shut the state and shut everybody down. Um, But I think I had it at the end of February because I remember feeling like I had the flu, but it was the worst flu I ever had. Oh, wow. And I was so sick, I couldn't even go to the doctor. I had to have the doctor prescribe me medicine over the phone. Oh, wow. Because I couldn't get up. Like, I mean, that's how, yeah, it was bad. It well, was well the, bad. the good news is that you've recovered, it sounds like. Um, so <laughs> yeah. that's good, right? <laughs> Thankfully, I'm here to tell about it. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, uh-huh. I, think, I think that might be the case for a lot of people. I think this thing was hitting people before anybody realized what was going on. And, yeah. um, you know, I think it was yeah. kind of a stealth virus for a while before we all caught on to what was happening. Yes. Yes. How are you? Are you good? Yeah, you know, I'm in upstate New York, in in, uh, Cooperstown, in fact, and uh, we've had very, very uh, little uh, concern here. I mean, I I guess we're all concerned, but we've had had very few cases. I think you can count them on one hand, which is... Oh, thank God. Yeah, which is really good. Um, In fact, there's... But there's been discussion because we are a tourist town, and even though most of the regular uh, major tourist events have been canceled for the year. There's still the Baseball Hall of Fame, and eventually they're going to open over the summer, and we expect a lot of people to be coming in, and that's when we may have to worry about it. But again, the good news with this thing is that while it can be very devastating, there's no, there's no understating that, most people that get this will recover and be fine. Yes, and I do believe that the ones that don't have underlying issues 
Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, so we're not here to talk about that. In fact, <laughs> we, we find ourselves talking about it all the time and we have to talk about something else. So I'm excited to do that tonight. Let's um, let's talk about you. At what point did you recognize that you had something special going on? Well, I got to be honest with you. Um, I'm a straight shooter, so I'm just going to tell you how it is. I, it started when I was four years old. Um, I didn't. Well, I didn't really think I was special. Like, I was scared, you know? I was really scared. Um, I, the only time I really felt special, I really felt special like I had a really good relationship with God, like at a, at a young age, you know what I mean? Um, like, I felt like he was my friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, at a young like, age, you felt that? You felt I that was, as a yeah, child? I was like four, like four. And I just remember just feeling so connected And now I went to Catholic school, but I mean, I wasn't even in Catholic school at four years old. You know what I mean? So I don't know where that came from, but... Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and I wasn't... I was scared. They used to shake my bed. Spirit used to shake my bed. You know? And I would tell my mother, I'm like, Mom... You know, this is, you know, when I was a little bit older, like eight maybe, and I would tell my mother, and I'm like, Ma, they shake my bed, and she's like, oh, no, it's just the car's drive it's the it's the trucks drive meanwhile we lived on a side street in Newark, new jersey on the third floor apartment. there were no trucks dri- later on in life she was like well i knew what was happening i just didn't want to scare you i'm like oh okay okay i have so many but, i have so many questions about uh, that first let yeah. me talk about you yeah. now as as your bed was being shaked or shaken and you were oh. in it i'm assuming what did you think was happening did you recognize this might be some type of uh, spiritual interaction I knew, yes, I knew it was something that, yeah, that nobody else could see, and I could see them. You could see them at that time. I could see them. Yeah, I physically see spirit with my eyes. And you did at four years old when you were in your bed and they were shaking your bed. You could actually see them doing this. I could see them doing this, but I saw them a lot differently then than I do now, because now I've had training and I've learned how how to turn it on and turn it off and kind of focus in on the other side. But when I was a kid, I was, I just saw, it almost looked like, um, the air was moving. You know what I mean? Like it, okay. you see movies like that, like, like uh, predator. All right. Remember the movie predator? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. You could kind of see, okay. kind of okay. see a so disturbance. Kinda like, yeah. yeah kind of mm-hmm. like you could see something in the air, but you're not quite sure what it was. That's how I used to see them when I was small. And they would physically shake my bed. So now, knowing what I know, I'm 48 now, knowing what I know now, I do know that they were just trying to get my attention and they were being playful with me because spirit would never try to, you know, scare you like that. Um, but still, I was scared, you know. It, it was, yeah. Of course, it, of course it had to be very frightening at that age. Um, yeah. I mean, did you, other than telling your mother, which I don't know if you did at the time it was happening, what, did you pull your covers up over your head and just oh hope it go away? Oh, my God, I pulled the covers up over my head. I was like, please go away, please go away. <laughs> yeah, yes, it was awful. Did you have any interactions during the day, or was it just at nighttime when you were going to sleep? It was mostly at nighttime, because during the day I was in school, um, you know, I was playing with my friends, uh, you know, so it was at night when I was, when, when all was quiet in my mind, they would always show up then, which funny enough, I can't believe I'm going to admit this on air. I'm afraid of the dark still, because when I open my eyes at night, I still see them there. In my bedroom, they don't really? dare shake my bed anymore because now, I'm like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> anymore. You know what I mean? I got to learn to get tough. But, um, but they, they're there. They're still there. When, when my, when my mind is quiet and and all is quiet and I'm not busy during the day, like, I mean, but now I see them during the day because obviously I do readings. You know what I mean? But it's it's different. They know what when I'm when I'm quiet and they still want to communicate because they don't work in time like humans do. There's no time on the other side. You know, so I have to tell them, no, you have to leave. Yeah. Like like now. (laughs) 
Yeah. And they listen to you. They'll actually... They do. They you... absolutely do. Even my son. My son's had the gift since he was five years old. And Oh, I thought just, you meant you know, when you'd tell your son to leave and he would listen to you as well. I mean... Yeah, no, he doesn't listen so much. <laughs> Spirit listens a little more than he does. But, <clears throat> but even when he was little, I told him how to tell them how to leave, and he, and he did it. And he was like, Ma, it works. And thank God that that saved me a world of crap with him. So... So tell Thankfully, me, tell me about your mom, though. You said uh, your mom would would kind of give you excuses until later on. You realize she said she she knew what was going on, but uh, she didn't yeah. want to frighten you. So tell me about her uh, opinion and her involvement in all of this. Okay, so my mom is gifted as well. Um, my mom sees them a little differently than I do. It's funny. It's crazy. She sees them like opaque, like like skin. I don't see them like that. When I see them, I see them like a photo negative. Um, and sometimes they'll make like a movie on the wall for me and they'll be animated and they'll show me like scenes from their life. But I'll get to describe your loved ones in spirit by looking at their face, but they look like, like black and white. My mother sees them like they're, they're opaque, like, like fleshy, but she sees them like quick. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like a split second. Mm-hmm. And I, I've always tell, I'm like, Ma, you should really hone in on this because you could be really good medium. She's like, nah, I don't want to be, you know, whatever. But um, so I guess because, you know, I'm here I am young. And I thought that she didn't believe me. I really thought that she was just kind of, yeah, 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 kid, sure, sure, sure. Right? But then I was 11 years old. So fast forward, I was 11 years old. And my grandmother's second husband. Okay, he was not my um, biological grandfather. He was her second husband, and he was in the hospital. I still call him Grandpa Gene. And um, we went to visit him, and now my Uncle Sammy was there, uh, my godfather. And we're Italian, so being raised Italian, when the adults are speaking, the children go to another side of the room. I'm very very familiar with that. My mother was born yeah. in Italy. I was raised yeah. the same way. Yep. <laughs> So, you know, I, I just, hi, Uncle Sammy, kissed him, hello, Grandpa Jean was sleeping in the hospital bed. I went to the other side of the room where the hospital bed was empty, and there were some empty chairs. So I'm sitting in the empty chair, and my mother and my Uncle Sammy are kibitzing back and forth. And my mother was staring at me. She saw me looking over at the empty seat next to me, and she goes, what do you see? And I described the woman that was sitting in the chair next to me, head to toe, Well, my Uncle Sammy turned white. He goes, that's Jean's mother. Now, Jean's mother had died. I didn't know Jean's mother, Grandpa Jean's mother. I was 11 years old. You know, as far as, you know, they just got married, you know, not that long ago. But, yeah, Uncle Sammy knew that that was Jean's mother. And that's how my family knew that I wasn't crazy and had invisible friends. Wow. So your mother had the gift as well, but didn't really mm-hmm. want to practice it. Um, did it did it bother her? I mean, some people had, had have religious objections to be to doing that. Anything like that? Well, we're Roman Catholic. Sure. So I went to Catholic school. Yep. Um, and it, you know, Catholicism is still a big part of my life because, like I said, I'm Italian. I really don't have a choice in this matter. But I know that there is no religion on the other side. That I can tell you. Um, there's just love. Their, their religion is love. Um, but so I, I was even conflicted, like in my 20s, I wasn't sure. But my mother, she's not conflicted because she's so open-minded, and, and her level of consciousness is very high. And she knows. Like, so she's not, she's not scared unless she's by herself. And, like, you know, the door will open or, like, creepy things will happen. And, you know, she's felt like somebody sit next to her on the bed while she was in bed. Um, sleeping. And, you know, yeah, so she, she's scared when she's by herself, too. I guess I think that's just a human thing. I think it's human nature to just be afraid when you're alone. Like, everybody has, like, great giant balls when they're, like, with other people, like paranormal investigators and stuff. You know, there's, like, ten of you. So, you know <laughs> what I mean? So I wouldn't be afraid if there were, you know, ten of us. But when I'm by myself, I still get that, like, nervous feeling. And so does she. She tells me that all the time. She's like, oh, something was in the house last night. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's pretty funny. So you, as a child, and you're you're experiencing these uh, things like your bed being shaken and other things. Were you able to control it? Were you eventually able to turn it off so that you could kind of put it aside until you were old enough to deal with it? It wasn't until I was forty. So I'm forty-eight. Okay, 
So it wasn't until I was 40 years old that I was able to turn it on and turn it off. And that's because all those years, it would just happen random. So um, my boyfriend at the time said to me, um, why don't you do this? Like, you have a gift. Why don't you, why don't you do this? You know, start reading people. And I'm like, because I don't know. It just happens random. I didn't know how to turn it on and turn it off. And right. he found school for me. He found a course for me to take. And, and that was that was the first of many courses because once I started, I couldn't stop. I was like a sponge. I was learning so much because here, here this dormant gift, if you will, or ability inside of me that maybe a handful of people knew about. You know what I mean? Because I'm a makeup artist. I went to school uh, to be a makeup artist, so right. I'm a professional makeup artist. I do film and, and, and weddings and stuff like that, and I'll still do that because I love it. It's like a great hobby. But um, I, uh, I I started you know, going to school, and, and I studied with world-renowned mediums from England, Tony Stockwell, Mavis Patilla, um, just wonderful, wonderful mediums, and I just I just absorbed everything. And once I learned how to turn it on and turn it off, I opened up Halo, and I've been doing readings ever since. And it's it's wonderful. Now it's like like that. Like like I just ask for them and they show. Wow. So up until the point you were forty, though, you had no control over it, and these things would just keep coming to you and trying mm-hmm. to interact with you, and you just had to try to ignore it. Well, I. Yeah, I didn't really ignore it. I mean, the only time I really ignored it is if I was like, um, you know, working on a bride's makeup because I'm trying to not make her cry. <laughs> you know, right, so right. Um, I wouldn't really ignore it unless, you know, unless I was afraid or I just couldn't, you know, because it was always very interesting to me that that they would just come to me and and, and just want to communicate. You know what I mean? But I really, I really wasn't sure how, you know, it's, that's why schooling is so it's so important. It really is. You have to you have to hone in on your ability. It's like God gives you the tools. You got to learn how to sharpen those tools. Why do you think some people like yourself have a far greater sensitivity to this, and others like my, like me have absolutely zero sensitivity to it? Um, I do believe that everybody is born with some sort of gift, but it's not always mediumship. You know what I mean? And some people really don't want to. You know, like I know people who do have gifts and don't want them, you know. Um, I just believe that some of us are, are born with it and, and can, um, you know, build upon that skill. Um, I do believe we all have intuition. Um, I do believe a lot of us are psychic or empathic. Um, but I don't know. To be a medium, there's just something i don't know i don't listen i'm not saying i'm special i think there's a million of us you know what i mean but like it's just like having the gift of children like the gift of being good with children special needs children or or athletes you know what i mean like think about athletes like that's a natural gift that they're born with you know what i mean and 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 it's just these abilities you know it's like for whatever reason we're all born with you know different abilities but i don't know why some of us are more sensitive than others. It's kind of a blessing and a curse sometimes because I feel everything so intense. Like my senses are so heightened, you know what I mean, that I, I can't take loud noises. I can't take bright lights. I can't take crowds. Like I, I can't handle it. And it's, it's as I get older, I think it gets worse. And you think that has something to do with these psychic sensitivities that's related? I do. Really? I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because sometimes I feel like I'm in and out of two worlds. You know? And the veil is literally like if you if you take your left hand and you move it to your left a little bit, that's where that's where the other side is. It's right there. And sometimes I feel like I'm in here and I'm out there. and It's, it's just, it's crazy. But yeah, I, I'm just it's a balance. It's a balancing act. That's and and you, you said every, you think that everybody has some level of this. Absolutely. Some, some, uh, some kind of something, yeah. yeah I s- definitely believe that. And some like me, may, it may be so uh, underdeveloped that, you know, I just don't feel it at all. Um, do you think there's a genetic component to that? Like you said, your mother had these sensitivities, and you obviously have, a, have them very developed. Um, do, you my, think, yeah, do you think that's a, gen- do you think that's a genetic connection? I think there is, yeah, I definitely think there's a genetic connection. 
Um, I definitely do, because most mediums that I know, somebody in their family was a medium, their grandmother, their great aunt. You know what I mean? Like somebody, I mean, everybody I know has somebody in their family that, that does this as well. Mm-hmm. You, uh, has a gift. You're, uh, it's pretty clear what a medium does, and you do that. You, you speak to the other side. Uh, the psychic part of what you do, there are a lot of different kinds of psychic. How would you describe yourself? Um, honestly, I, well, all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. Um, so all mediums have psychic abilities. I have to be honest with you. I strongly dislike the word psychic. I strongly yeah. dislike it. And it's yeah. only because here in Jersey, okay, <laughs> <laughs> here in lovely New Jersey, I keep like seeing like the boardwalk psychic, the, the, the palm reader, the fortune teller, or or driving down Route 17 and seeing like a big red bright palm, you know, palm reader. Like it just it it just turns me off. The name, the word psychic, turns me off. But for search engine optimization, it is optimal that I use right. it in my tagline. So I do, um, and I am psychic. I definitely am, but I'm predominantly a medium. So what happens is when I read for you. So even, okay, so I'll do a medium reading or I'll do a tarot reading or I'll do both, right? So when I'm, say if I'm reading tarot, that's not necessarily a medium thing. I'm not bringing in your loved ones. I'm just reading your past, present, future cards, right? right? Mm -hmm. Spirit will literally, I'll go to flip a card and now doing this, you know, almost 10 years, I'm like, oh, I know what this card means, you know, and I'll go to speak. Spirit will literally stop me in my tracks and say, no, no, say it like this. So I can't even use my own words sometimes. It's like I have to listen to them and then give it because it's like they're kind of going through me. So that's why I'm like, well, yeah, I'm psychic and I do know things sometimes, but I really feel like I'm predominantly a medium because the information that I'm getting and like the downloads that I'm getting and what I'm seeing and hearing and feeling and is all from them. So how could I even take the credit for that? I, I call myself the messenger. I'm literally just the messenger. <laughs> Don't kill the messenger. <laughs> when you're getting the messages, particularly when, before you could control it and turn it off, and it was, they were just coming to you, were you hearing them in your ears? Was it more telepathic? Was it more of a feeling? How were the messages themselves coming to you? Okay, so like I said, I physically see them, but I don't hear them audibly. So it's not an audible voice that I'm hearing. I'm hearing them like inside my head although I feel a pressure on my ear just before they're ready to talk. A pressure on your it, ear? Yeah, it's like a pressure on my right ear just before they're ready to talk. It's almost like I can feel them moving in closer to me. And then it's not an audible voice like you or I have. It's like an inside-my-head voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you, if, if you weren't calling them, like prior to you controlling this and actually making an effort to contact somebody on the other side for one of your, um, the people you're doing a reading for, uh, who, who was coming to you? Was it just random spirits? Were these family members? Were these uh, s- uh, spirits that needed help in some way? Yeah, I'm assuming they were. I mean, I did see a few of my family members. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I just lost one of my best friends to COVID a few weeks ago. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. Him. Oh, no, thank you. But I, I deal with death a little bit differently. Thankfully, I've seen him six times already. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, but I think they were, I don't know who they were when I was a child. You know, like I didn't know that that woman was Grandpa Jean's mother. Right. You know, I just knew that she was there and I could describe her. And what's funny is even now when I do readings and and I'm doing a medium reading, I'll see, say the man steps forward, right, and he'll manifest his face. I'll see his face on the wall, right? I'll be able to describe the man that's in front of me. Okay, I have a man stepping forward and he looks like this. And I'll, you know, his hair, his eyes, his ears, his nose was big, his teeth were crooked. They'll hone in on, they'll point to their teeth if they had a space between their teeth. They'll show me details about their face, features, whatever, right? But I don't know who that person is. I can only describe him for you. So um, unless that spirit tells me I'm her father, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, sometimes I get a little lazy and I just, I'm like, listen, this is what they look like. And immediately I don't even have to say, I don't even have to ask spirit. Well, who are you? Because they already, oh my God, that's my dad. Because I'm describing their face. I'm describing your loved ones and what they look like. 
Tell me more about this relationship you felt you had with God. You said you felt very close to God uh, at, a, at a very early age. Tell me a little more, more about that and how that relationship either uh, developed or stayed the same or changed or whatever throughout the course of the years. Okay, it definitely developed. Um, and again, like I, I know everything I know is not from my own opinion. What I know and what I speak of comes from the other side directly to me. So it's from experience and what they've taught me. It's not my opinion. Well, I think it's like this. There really is no religion on the other side. So I'm not trying to shove religion down anybody's throat, but I'm going to tell you right now, there definitely is a God, and he is the source, and he is the universe. So you can call him whatever you want. I like calling him God. (laughs) So um, I was very, I don't know. Honestly, I felt so close like I was I just remember being four years old in my living room playing with my dolls and always looking up like I would look up as if to address God and hear him and I just felt like 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 he was like my best friend you know what I mean like he was just my friend like I I just felt like like I had a mission I knew I had a mission but I didn't know at four years old that it was called a mission. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just knew that there was something I was supposed to do. And this was coming from what you believe to be God. Absolutely. Okay, so a lot, a lot of, a lot of kids will. First of all, a lot of kids will have imaginary friends, or we call them imaginary. I'm not so convinced they're actually imaginary. Exactly. Um, secondly, a lot of those quote unquote imaginary friends will turn out to be the the spirit of, of a family member or somebody that's kind Absolutely. of watching over God. So, you, but you're you're more convinced that you're uh, the interaction you were having at that age was actually with God. Yes. Um, yeah. And then that's very powerful, obviously. Yes. And, and then I remember fast forward to Catholic school, and I remember being in first grade, and um, my teacher, Miss Elia, was trying to pick us, you know, for the school play, and I was chosen to be Mary in the school play, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember now... You can ask my boyfriend. I forget everything. I have such a terrible, terrible memory. He makes fun of me. So I, um, I remember my line in the play was, I will do what God wants me to do. And that stuck with me. And it, even as I say it now, I feel like that lump in my throat because I know that it means something. You know, so it, it, it to me, it is very, it's, I, it, it, he's, He's everything. He's the source. You know what I mean? He's just, he's all energy. He's everywhere. Have you, and this might be a little too personal, but have you ever had any um, um, conflict with any of the clergy that you uh, are are acquainted with about what you do? No, actually, um, no. Our our priest, uh, well, he's a Monsignor now, uh, Monsignor Granada uh, from St. Lucie's Church in Newark. I've had many conversations with him, many conversations, and um, he never once, like, poo-pooed it. You know what I mean? He never once, like, told me that it was, you know, he was so open to it. And, you know, I don't know if because the element of God was there when I was speaking with him about what I was seeing and what was going on. Um, I don't know, but he was so, like, kind and and non-judgmental, and, yeah, it was fine. Like, you know... I don't, I don't, I just tell it like it is. You know what I mean? Like, this is my experience. This is, this is how it is. Right. And that's, that's important. I, I want to ask you one more question. We have to go to break. Oh, but, um, you know, we, you, you mentioned early on there, you know, there are a million psychic mediums. There's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. all of them are as uh, genuine as you are. What is your opinion of the industry as a whole? And, how do you feel about some some of these quote unquote psychic mediums that may be more predatory? Well, I've been fortunate enough not to come across anybody like that. Like anybody in my community, um, you know, I, I'm friends with mediums all over the world, and they're all so wonderful. And I have like really close friends. One of my best friends is a medium. You know, like so I I have not had that experience. I've heard. People have bad experiences such as, um, you know, oh, you have, you have a, a, a hex on you. Somebody put the, you know, a, a hex on you or 
or um, a spell on you, and, and if you give me three hundred dollars a week for the next four weeks, I can get rid of the spell. Right. Run. Yeah. yeah. Run. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so. You know, but thankfully, I haven't had any bad experiences with meeting anybody like this. And and I truly believe. Listen, you could probably fake being psychic or palm. I don't know, but how can you fake being a medium? You need to bring that evidence because your job is to bring the evidence of the person standing in front of you. You know what I mean? Their loved ones. You you have to bring the evidence of that spirit. How can you fake that? Especially, listen, and mediums should not ask questions. And Everybody I know that's a medium is a very good medium. And you should just not ask, you're not supposed to ask questions beforehand. Like when I, when I do give a reading, I know your first name and what time you're calling. You know what I mean? I don't want to know anything else. Yeah, and I've seen some of the other ones. You said, you know, how can you fake being a medium? Being a medium? I've seen some people try. They're not very good at it, but they've tried. Um, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. They're, they can't be good at it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Um, so once again, for people who, uh, you know, look look at uh, you know on a website or whatever it is, and they they say, hmm, I'd like to talk to somebody, but I'm not sure is this person legit or not. What other than uh, you know the the hex and the voodoo thing, which we've seen too much of? What are some other ways that people can kind of discern whether or not their their time and in many cases money is uh, well spent? Okay, so well, first of all, the money should not be an astronomical amount. It should be a fair price. Um, And, you know, there shouldn't be, like, a questionnaire beforehand. You know what I mean? It should just be very, like, okay, you can book your reading here, and you can call me at this time, or I'll see you at this time. And really, there should be not much of an exchange at all. I tell everybody, listen, please don't feed. I've heard people say this a lot. Don't feed the medium. So... What I'll do, I can only speak for myself, really, is that I'll, I'll just say, okay, I'm going to see who comes through, and I'm going to bring through the first spirit or two, and if it's not who you wanted, I'm only going to ask you to give me the first name of the spirits that you want, and I'm going to bring them through. Now, I don't ask for anything. The only thing I ask is that you validate and claim your dead people, because some people will sit there and they're quiet right. because they want all the information, but they don't realize that once they speak up and say, I think I know who that is, even if only you say that, I think I know who that is, he sounds familiar to me, that spirit, his energy rises. You know what I mean? And his vibration rises, and then he wants to give more. But if, if my client's not saying anything and they're just sitting there waiting for Jesus Christ himself to climb down off the cross and say, listen, she's talking to your grandfather. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's not going to happen. You need to go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, just look for uh, J.V. Johnson there. We have about 500 back episodes of the program on YouTube, which are there for your listening or viewing enjoyment. Uh, there's no charge. Subscribe. It's all free, and it's there for you to access. Again, YouTube and just search for J.V. Johnson. Also, our Twitch channel is kind of the newest member to our digital family, and what we're doing there is we're, we're kind of gearing it up so that we can use it for our weekend programs, which, as most of you know, are a little more casual and a little uh, less serious, for sure. We like to have fun on Friday and Saturday nights, and we do that primarily on the Twitch channel. We can play games. We have a, a point system, which offers people an opportunity to do uh, special things in the chat. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and then the third thing I need you to do is visit the website, Beyond Reality Radio. Go there. There's a whole bunch of stuff, including the Beyond Reality Radio coffee mug, which looks great, whether it has coffee in it or pens and pencils. I use mine. I have a bunch of them on my desk here for pens and pencils. Holds them like a champ. It also holds coffee like a champ, hot chocolate, tea, even even soda if you want to go that route. Uh, it's the Beyond Reality Radio coffee mug. Tonight we're talking with Denise Marie, psychic medium Denise Marie. Her website is halo, H-A-L-O, readings.com. Com, and we're talking about her work and the fact that she actually recognized these gifts as a very young child. And I want to go back to that moment for a second. You said you saw these spirits that were shaking your bed and interacting with you. Um, and, and, and you were frightened. You didn't know how to handle it. But did you see any that might have offered you um, that same connection that you felt when you were certain that you were interacting with God? I mean, could any of these have been angels? You know, I I seen an angel once, 
I wasn't, I wasn't until I was like 27 years old, though. Um, I saw an angel in my mother's apartment, and it was a split second, and it was enormous. It was as tall as the ceiling, and it was about six feet wide with, like, the wings and everything, and it was just bright and beautiful. Um, before that, I had never seen anything like that um, or felt like that same connection. And when I would, like, look up at the ceiling and I felt like I was connecting with God, I never saw anything. I just felt it. Like, I felt the presence of something great. And when I connect with spirit, it's very different than that feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think it does make sense. I think there's definitely a difference there, um, and I've heard yeah. that from other people too. So I don't think that's unusual at all. So uh, you were um, dealing with this until you were 40 years old. At 40 years old, you recognized that you could control it, and you started to. Uh, was yeah. it was it at that point that you started to help people and started to do readings Absolutely. for people right away? It was like the second I learned how to turn that switch on and off. I was I jumped in with both feet and I was helping people right away. Having not helped people up until, up until that point, what did you expect that you could do? How did you think you could help them with this gift? I just knew that I I would be able to give them guidance. Um and what's funny is like when I first started out uh doing readings, um I kind of started reading tarot as kind of like a crutch. Right, because yeah. I was afraid to come out and say, "Well, I'm a medium." You know what I mean? Because I, I was still like, you know, I jumped in with both feet, but I never used that word because I felt like I knew my place. You know what I mean? And I was a newbie. So what I would do is I would use the tarot deck as a crutch, and I would say, "Okay, well, I'm going to read your tarot, mm-hmm. and if spirit comes forward, would that be okay if I brought them through?" And they'd always say yes, and every single time, spirit would come forward. So it wasn't until like a year later where I was like, I am a medium and I can actually claim this service and not have to use tarot if I don't want to. So now I have separate services for tarot and mediumship or one for both. Um, But now I know that I can flip flop and do both. (laughs) You know what I mean? I don't need the tarot as a crutch anymore. Now, the tarot works completely differently, right? You're not drawing on uh, spirits or the other side when you're reading tarot cards. Right. I'm just reading your past, your present, your future. Yes. That's all. Yeah, I guess it's all psychic. But like I said, my guides, like your spirits will stay out of the session because I ask them to, but my guides are in my ear saying, well, say it like this. You know what I mean? So it's like they're they're kind of coaching me, you know, to say what I need to say. And then they'll make me feel things like like um my client sitting across from me and I'll like all of a sudden my my head will start to pound um above my left eye and I'm like, Are you getting migraines? And oh my god, yes. She goes right there where I where I'm pointing to my own head. She goes, I'm getting migraines. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm able to feel the ailments of the person. You know what I mean? Not, the, not in a of, bad way. I mean, the, I'm not the grim reaper. Right? You're, feeling, so. you're feeling the ailments of the person you're reading or of the person yeah. you're talking to on the other side? The person that I'm reading. I see. I also do feel the ailments of the person that I'm talking to on the other side. Like, they'll make me feel how they pass sometimes. You know, I was, I, I was doing an investigation with my cousin. My cousin's a paranormal investigator in Massachusetts. They invited me on an investigation. Now, I'm not a paranormal investigator, but how fun is that? I was like, yeah, I'm going, of course, you know? And I walked past one of the bathrooms, and I felt like the blood was draining out of my body, and I had never felt this before. And the woman who gives the tours, um, we're, we're going to be on Amazon TV uh, in the fall sometime with this show. Um, it's called uh, Truth or Legends. And she was, you know, she was following me around, and with the cameras and everything that I was getting, she was validating because she was she ran the place and did the tour, so she had all the knowledge of the place. I didn't even know the name of the place. So I walked past the bathroom. I felt like I had this strange feeling like I was losing all of my blood. Now, how would I know what that feels like, right? right? Yeah. She goes, what are you feeling? I said, I don't know. I don't like it. I was so upset. 
I was like, I don't like this feeling. I says, I feel like I'm losing the blood from my body. She goes, the bathroom users walk past. A woman committed suicide. She split her wrist in that bathtub. Oh, wow. So now I know what that feels like. So now when I get a spirit that steps forward and I feel that same feeling, I know that they died by losing their blood. Now, they're not going to show me them slitting their wrists because I don't want to see that. (laughs) You know what I mean? But I'll know this person's making me feel like I'm losing all my blood. And then my client will be like, yeah, she hemorrhaged during childbirth. or or, You know what I mean? Like it's always something where they're actually losing their blood. Share, uh, if you can, where in uh, Massachusetts was this? In, in, do you remember the name of the place? Yes, I do. Uh, it's called the S.K. Pierce Mansion. So when I got there, I didn't know the name of it. I just, you know, I arrived, and, and it was a beautiful place, and I, I just did my investigation. With that. With three hours, I walked around with a camera following me, and I just pulled spirit left and right. When I got to the hotel that we were staying at, I looked it up because I was now I knew the name of it. So I Googled S.K. Pierce, and it came up as the second most haunted house in Massachusetts. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, my God. And I'm laughing because I'm like, haunted? I'm like, these spirits were so lovely. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We we have a couple questions running through our chat room here that I want to put to you. Uh, One is, uh, do you have an opinion on angels? And I know we talked about angels a little bit Mm -hmm. already, but specifically Archangel Michael. Yes. What are your thoughts on Archangel Archangel Michael? I love Archangel Michael because whenever I am feeling uneasy in the middle of the night, and I I hope that the caller can hear me say this, whenever you're feeling uneasy, call upon Archangel Michael because he will protect you. So even me, whenever I'm feeling uneasy in the middle of the night, if there's a spirit there that doesn't really want to leave because they're desperate and they want to talk to me so I can get to their family members, but I'm not feeling it because I'm tired. I have a unisom in me and I'm trying to sleep and (laughs) they're not leaving. I'll call upon Archangel Michael and they'll leave like that. I don't know if you heard me snap my finger. Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and they yeah. So the very protecting uh, archangel Michael is is wonderful. I was visited by one archangel, um, and it was Raphael. And the only reason I know it was Raphael was because he came to me as an orb, and it was kind of greenish and clear. And I had spoken to a couple of other mediums, and they were like, "Green, that's Archangel Raphael." I don't know much about the archangels. Um, and ever since that visit, now I paint angels that I can't draw to save my life. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're, we're going to talk about that uh, a little bit later, too, because I want to get more mm-hmm. information about the, the angel <laughs> painting that you do, because that's pretty, that's pretty interesting stuff. We're talking with Denise, Denise Marie tonight, psychic medium Denise Marie. Her website is Halo Readings, H-A-L-O, readings.com. Why Halo, Denise? Honestly, I have no idea, but the day that I was home from work... <laughs> And um, I, I was homesick, and I was on my laptop, and I said, I was 40. I had just took my first class. I was so ready to jump in with both feet, and I started my Facebook page. And I think it was October 17th, and I, I started my Facebook page, and I was like, what am I going to call it? And the name just came to me, Halo Readings. I don't know where it came from, I, and it, it just stuck. Talk about angels. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's right? crazy. <laughs> um, as you started to work with uh, people um, and give readings to people, uh, were you surprised at how much information you were getting and how many of these people had uh, family members on the other side that were anxious to talk to them? Yeah, it, yeah, it was it was an overwhelming feeling, but but a really good overwhelming feeling. There's nothing like it in the world. It is, it is my favorite thing to talk about. It is my favorite thing to do. Um, I, and I'll never, ever be like, ah, yeah, no big deal. Like, never. I will never, I will forever be humble. You know, I can't believe, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, I, t- tell me about um, other, because uh, you mentioned a, a couple that you worked with, but are there any others, psychic mediums, that specifically inspire you or that you that serve as role models for you? Um, Lindsay Marino, uh, she's out of Florida. 
and um, I've actually um, had the privilege of becoming friends with her, and she's just she was my mentor for a long time, um, and she still is. You know, I, I took her business course, and she's just wonderful, and she's just so genuine and good and a wonderful medium. Um, also, uh, somebody else that is a kind of a role model for me is Pat Longo. She's not a medium, but she's a healer. And um, she actually mentored um, the Long Island medium, Teresa Caputo, mm-hmm. and she mentored me as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I, and I, I love John Edward. I will always love that man. Like, I just look up to him and, uh, you know, all, all the greatest ones, you know, um, James Van Prague, um, you know, these, I just always looked up to them and, and read their books and I'm just... I love the way they work. I love to watch other mediums work. Um, I, I just I enjoy it so much. You've had the opportunity and the and the honor in many ways to talk to people on the other side. So let's talk about some of the things you may have learned from those conversations yeah. that aren't specific to the people that you're doing readings for, but just kind of more in general as to what's going on in this this world and the next. So mm-hmm. if I I mean if I had to ask a blanket question here and answer it any way you feel appropriate, but what happens to us after we die? So we don't come into this world alone, and we do not leave this world alone. So somebody will come and get you that you recognize and know and love very much. And before they take you, sometimes you might need an explanation first. I watched this happen with my father when he was dying. I watched him talk to his mother, and I he, would, he refused to go until he got an exclamation, exclamation, (laughs) hello, I could talk, an explanation of what was going to happen. And she explained it to him until he was ready to go. Um, But we, we, you know, some of us go a little quicker and, you know, without a fight. (laughs) But my dad was a toughie. Um, So, you know, we, we leave and we go to the other side. And then we have, we get, we get the privilege to help our loved ones that are still living. And I always say, this is one of my favorite things to say, is we get time while they get freedom because they're truly free. They are. They're free. And it, it's beautiful. It's, just, it's, it's more beautiful than I could even ever describe from their descriptions and what they have shown me. It is just, it, 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 and it's nothing but love. When spirit steps forward, I don't mean to jump all over the place, I'm sorry, but when spirit steps forward and makes me feel, and they don't do this often because it overwhelms me, when spirit steps forward and makes me feel how much they love the person sitting in front of me, my body can't handle all of that love. It, it comes out of my pores, it comes out of my eyes, I start to tear. Like I, The human body cannot contain the amount of love that spirit has for us. Um, so I've learned that <laughs> before, before you go to what else you've learned, I need, I want to ask you a couple things about what you just said. Sure. First, first yes. of all, you said, uh, you said we get time, they get freedom. What do you mean by we get time? Cause we have, we have to wait. We have to wait to be with them again. We get the time. We have to grieve. That's, we have time. We have, and not, not in a good way. It's like we have all this time oh, before we mean. can see them again. We have all this time that we're left here grieving and missing them. And another thing is they don't miss us because they're still with us. We miss them. That, that's a human thing. They don't have those. As soon as, we, as soon as we shed our human body, we leave behind all the negativity and all the feelings of hatred and hurt and jealousy and grudges and, you know, no, your father is not mad at you for selling his golf clubs. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, they don't hold on to the material. It's literally nothing but love, but it's more love you can ever imagine. How do we explain then what we would consider to be somewhat negative paranormal experiences? Is that just a matter of, uh, of trying to get attention or... Are, are there is there some type of uh, emotion at play here that uh, that we don't understand? I think, and it's probably an unpopular opinion, but I do feel in my heart of hearts that it's a matter of perception from the human okay. of what is happening. Okay, now 
Um, I'm not saying that, listen, because there's yin and yang and everything. So I'm not saying, I'm just saying I've never encountered, knock on wood, we're here, um, knock on wood, that I've never encountered a negative entity or energy. But um, uh, I think that, okay, picture this. You're in your basement and you're doing laundry. You feel something. You feel something is different where it gets a little colder or you feel something behind you kind of on the back of your neck a little bit, right? It's probably your sweet old grandmother. But what are we doing? We're running up those basement stairs like we can't even get there quick enough. You know what I mean? Because we're afraid because most humans are afraid of what they cannot see. I I don't blame them. You know what I mean? But most humans are afraid. So right away, what do we do? We go to the negative. This is my best analogy for that, okay? A woman, all women, listen to me. You walk into a room, you had your hair done, your makeup done, you have your best dress on. You walk into a room, you see two women in the corner start to look at you and whisper. What's the first thing you're going to think of? They're talking crap about me. I look terrible. They don't like my hair. They don't like my dress. They could actually be saying, oh, my God, she looks beautiful. But because we go to the negative first, as humans, that's what we do. It is the natural reaction, isn't it? It is. It's uh, yes. <laughs> tell me yep. about tell me about the word spirit because in several cases you use that as a plural as well. What are we talking yeah. about there? I uh, yeah, I'm mostly yeah. I I do use it as a, 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 a singular more than a plural actually because I I just it's like a general like spirit when I talk to spirit. I, I guess I should probably say spirits, but I don't know. Um, what did you want to know? What I just didn't the, know if there if there was a definition of that word that maybe I wasn't understanding because of the way no, you were using it. No, not really. Okay. I just I flip flop back and forth. Even when I write, I write in like I'm a mixture of like capitals and and lowercase letters. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Nope. So do do uh, people? I don't know. Do spirit on the other side. Spirits on the other side always have a message. To deliver, or I mean, in some cases, if you're if you're doing a reading for somebody, is it more of just the presence, and there really there are no words with that message? Most of the time, there's some kind of message. Okay, most of the time, that spirit will bring up somebody else in the family, and I'll say to that person, okay, he's he's talking about the the V name. He's giving me a V. Is it Virginia? Yes. Oh my God, that's my aunt Virginia. Okay, what is going on with Aunt Virginia? Can you please tell me? Oh my God, she's not doing well. Okay, well he's letting you know that he's drawing in closer to her to be with her at this time. So that's part of the message. The other thing is sometimes spirit will show me what you had for dinner. Um, you had pizza tonight? Yes, I had pizza tonight. Okay, so he's letting you know that he was with you while you were having pizza. He was sitting at the table with you while you were having pizza. Or he hears you in the car when you're talking to him. And, and yes, that was him that sent that song. Sometimes that is the message. You know what I mean? The message is, is I'm, I'm not gone. I have not left you. You know, yeah. other times it's um, uh, your car needs to be fixed because, uh, you know, what, what are you doing? You have to get on that. You know what I mean? I've heard that. <laughs> you know, what's going on with your car? Oh, my God, the wheel. Like, yeah, well, don't wait. They'll get that fixed. Because it's like they'll never say anything. Like I, I always say, like, I don't give negative messages because they don't really have any. The only time they would ever say um, do this or do that is is if they could prevent it because they can't you know jump in the middle of our free will or our blueprint you know what I mean they can't do that but if it's something that can be prevented they'll prevent it. Do any of these uh, spirits that you communicate with, whether it's for a reading or they just come to you for whatever reason, uh, are they confused about where they are? Are they uncertain no. about their status? No, not at all. Really? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I've read. For people, I brought spirit through the same day that they've passed. The same day. They're acclimated. You know, all right, so it takes a little while, but, they, but they're, they're, they're showing up. You know what I mean? It's almost like you remember. So don't forget, like, that's really home. This is just the layover. You know what I mean? So it's like as soon as we get back to that, we remember. We remember everything again. We're home. You know, and it's like riding a bike. You're home now. You know what to do. You know what I mean? So um, I've never had any spirit that was confused about, you know, 
where they were. I've never had, no, I've never had any of that. Do we reincarnate? Absolutely. You have no doubt? No doubt. No doubt. Dogs what? quicker than humans. <laughs> what do we know about what do we know about reincarnation? Do we do we is is there any uh, formula to it or is it completely random? Um my experience with people who have, you know spirits who have talked to me about reincarnation is that we kind of all wait for our soul family to be together again before we decide to go back around. Okay? So before we're born to this earth plane, we create a blueprint with our spirit guide on the other side. And we talk to our soul family over there. So I say, um, hey, can you be my mom this time, um, and I'll be your daughter? Okay, yeah. All right, can you be my dad? Can you, you know, and you kind of collaborate with your soul family, and sometimes you switch roles. And it's all about experience and learning. Um, so you wait for that soul family. So, like, say you're, your parents are gone, and your best friend is gone, and your husband's gone, and you're just left here. They're waiting for you to, to come back around again. You know what I mean? They're not going to reincarnate without you. You know? But sometimes the soul of a baby will go into another baby to be born again. You know what I mean? So, so say um, somebody's pregnant and they lose the baby, uh, you know, midterm, uh, you know, midway or whatever. Um, that soul can go into the next child. And and you could birth that child. So and then, to, so yeah. then that's so there is so some people could reincarnate virtually instantly because their soul family was all waiting for them, and then they all reincarnate. Uh, and yeah. in other cases, it may take generations for it to happen. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do believe it's all really our choice because we do have free will. You know what I mean? That's just like a general, for the most part, we wait for our soul family because we want to go back around with them again. And we, so we have free um, will on the other side as, t- as well? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I hear uh, a lot of talk about uh, frequency and vibration, and I have to be honest here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm a little confused as how this applies to the things that we're talking about, but these words are used very frequently uh, in these kinds of conversations. Can you help me understand this better? Um, yeah, I mean, I could try. I just think that they they are on a higher, a much higher spirit is on a much higher frequency than we are. So it's like they're vibrating at a higher, okay, so it's almost like a radio station, okay? When you tune into that radio station, sometimes it's fuzzy, sometimes it's like not clear, sometimes it's staticky, right? So you have to like mm-hmm. adjust the frequency to get the right level so you can hear it clearer, okay? So it's like the vibration brings you higher. Like so spirit vibrates at a higher frequency level than humans do. So when I connect with them, I need to raise my vibration. And they need to bring theirs down a bit, slow it down. Theirs is much higher and quicker, quicker, quicker. Mine's a little slower because I'm human, okay? And maybe I didn't have enough coffee that day. <laughs> so, um, but I have to bring mine higher. Now, how humans and mediums bring their vibration up is to think of things that bring them joy or self-care, like self-care routines or meditation. When I meditate, I listen to frequencies. So, um, you know, it, you, you have to, like, us as the conduit, we have to work on being able to raise that vibration, to raise that frequency, to match up with those on the other side. So they come in and they lower theirs a bit, and then we higher ours a bit, and we meet somewhere in the middle but we have to do work to, to be at that level. You can't, like, as humans, we can't be at that level of frequency all the time. We we'll exhaust ourselves. You follow? Is you did, you, did, a, you did. did a stellar job of explaining, and I'm still not sure I understand, <laughs> but that's okay. There are a lot of things I don't understand. Um, we're talking tonight with Denise Marie, a psychic medium, De- Denise Marie. Her website is very easy to remember. It's Halo Readings, H-A-L-O, Halo Readings.com. Calm. Denise, you started out your professional life as a makeup artist. You said you actually still do some of that work. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I own a company with my sister. It's called Moonstruck 
makeup artistry, and we do weddings, we do brides, we do film, um, you know, infomercial stuff, and uh, yeah, it's great. I love it. You know, we're both makeup artists, and like I said, it's a hobby, but you know, you can make a living out of it too. But uh, mediumship, uh, and I was uh, uh, a rep for Smashbox Cosmetics for seven years. Um, I'm still kind of with them. Like, I'll never leave the company because, like I said, I, I love doing makeup, but mediumship had to come first. It had to. Yeah, and, and you um, you said and you, that this is a mission, a calling, a life's mission, a soul mission. 100%. Maybe. 100%. Um, yeah. How do, you, how do you know that, and uh, what does that mean? Does that mean that if you don't do this, you, you're not fulfilling your destiny? Or? I... For the longest time, you know how you get those, I don't know if you're on Facebook, well, you're, you're on Facebook, but I, you know how those memories come up? So nine years ago, I wrote a status that said, I am the most uninteresting person that I know because I didn't know who I, I hadn't found my purpose yet. You know what I mean? And then once I stepped into this role and like realized this was with me all along and how lucky I am that I get to do this work and be the voice for the voiceless. Okay. How lucky I am that I get to do this work and, and reconnect man and wife, you know what I mean? And, and, and mother and, you know, and son, you know, this is, this purpose is bigger than I am. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm just happy to be here. Like, th this purpose is bigger than me. So I'm fulfilled. Finally, I feel joy in my heart. And it's, it's made me a better human. Because spirit teaches me how to be a better human. I want to know about, your, about the uh, painting, your angel paintings. When did that start? Okay. Uh, you kind of said you're not really an artist, but this is something that you do and can do. Uh, tell us I, about this. Yeah, my artistry goes as far as makeup, and that's it. I can't draw a stick figure. But um, so I was, it was 2014. I was um, uh, the boyfriend that had uh, started me on my journey by saying, you know, you should go to school and found me a school to learn and blah, blah, blah. So he was in my life for a reason, but he left me abruptly. It was a very bad breakup, and I was very depressed. So I was depressed for, I would say, about eight to ten months where I was so upset and down that my mother and my sister would not leave my house because I had, you know, I had my son. My son was like eight years old at the time. And I don't remember. I mean, I had a job. I was working for Smashbox and I was doing readings, but, and, and I was raising my kid by myself, you know, and, and I don't remember going to work taking him to school, making dinner. I don't remember. It was all a blur. I felt like I was on autopilot. I was so depressed. So I was laying in bed one morning, and it was about 6 a.m., and, you know, it was just dawn. And I could see, like, there was a little bit of light in my room, and I could see underneath the ceiling there was this clear greenish orb. Now, people see orbs all the time right. in, in photos. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This was an actual real life orb on my ceiling. And I'm now I'm intrigued. I wasn't scared. I was intrigued. And I'm looking at it and now it's like moving across the ceiling. It's moving towards where my direction, right? And then now it's hovering over me. It's directly above me. But now it's bigger. And it started to lower itself. And now I swear to God, no lie, I thought this was it. They're coming to get me. Wow. I'm done. I'm coming, Elizabeth. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> okay? So I closed my eyes, and I just, I was ready. You know, of course, I didn't want to leave my son, my family, but I was ready. I had such a peace come over me. Closed my eyes. I could feel the tears coming out of my, uh, my eyes. And in the middle of the darkness, when my eyes were closed, it was like pitch black, like blacker and darker than I've ever seen darkness. And there was this white flicker of light, like a spark. And it spoke to me. And all he said was, just take care of your son and everything will be okay. Nothing more, nothing cryptic. Just take care of your son and everything will be okay. So when I opened my eyes, I was like, all I need to do is be a mother. 
I don't need to worry about what's coming or what's going to happen or what's this or what's that. I just have to focus on being a mom. I felt so much pressure come off of me, and I was like, I'm just going to focus on my kid. And then all of a sudden, like a couple of months later, maybe a month or two later, I was like intrigued, and I was like, I feel like I need to paint. And I went and I bought a couple of supplies, and I I painted my first angel, and I named her Hope. (laughs) <laughs> because, and she's my logo. She's my angel logo on all my business cards and my uh, my website. And her name is Hope. So, and my mother, my own mother, because now I commission paintings. I, I commissioned seven this year so far. Oh, wow. And and my mother will come to my house, stare at these paintings on my easel at my studio, and she goes, "What happened to you?" <laughs> because <laughs> she knows I can't draw. You know what I mean? So I swear, it's like I'm almost like I'm not in a trance state, but I'm sitting there, and I feel like I kind of zone out a little bit, like I'm almost like in a meditative state, and I'm zoning out, and I'm just, my hand is moving, and I'm doing my thing, and I am sort of involved in the process, but I never know what they're going to look like until they are finished. It looked like, uh, I mean, what little bit I saw on your website, it looks really like they're really, really interesting. And, and, and they, they clearly have a meaning far deeper than the paint on the canvas. Yeah, and they're definitely like, I mean, they're, they're just, when I look at them, sometimes I stare at their faces and I'm like, my God, like she's beautiful. And I can feel the moment that they start to come to life. You know what I mean? Like I feel the moment. And it's like whoever purchases these angels, it's like, I had a woman in Texas say, before I even, and sometimes I'll put them on live on my Facebook page on Halo Readings, and, and I'll, I'll be like, okay, I'm painting her, and I'm not sure what color hair she's going to have or what color eyes. And I had this woman reach out to me and say, she looks like my mother that just passed away. And she didn't even have a color hair or color eyes yet. So I, she goes, I want her. So she purchased her, and I said, send me a picture of your mother. So she sent me a picture, and I just made the hair and eye color that matched the mother's picture. And it turned out at the end result, now I can't mimic a painting or a picture of somebody. I'm, I'm just doing my thing. She ended up looking like this woman's mother. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy. It's, to me, even still, I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Denise, on a, on a bit of a more somber topic what happens to the spirit of someone who has committed suicide anything different very very good question i have two types that step forward to me there's two types of suicides okay sometimes they let me know they've committed suicide other times they don't because they don't want to bring up that bad you know what i mean so they try to not talk about it or whatever, but sometimes they do talk about it. But the the two types of suicides that I'm speaking of is I have the one that completely regrets it, and they're so, like, it's like they instantly regret it the second they're standing over their body. They tell me I regretted it the second I did it. What have I done? And I know I can't take this back. Okay? And then I have the other suicide that says I needed to get the hell out of here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes our soul does realize that maybe there's a part of us that remembers that what it's like to be actually home on the other side, and then we're not as fulfilled here because here is nothing like the other side. You know what I mean? So those are the people where they don't really have the regret. They're sorry to their loved ones. They feel bad for what they've done, and they always have an apology. Um, But, you know, I have one or I have the other. So I have those two, but they do they do cross over just like everybody else. They're not in purgatory. They're not in hell. Um, they do cross over, and they're with us. And they have work to do. They have work to do on themselves, on their souls. You know, to, to grow their soul. We may 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 not always have an opportunity to communicate directly with loved ones or others on the other side. However, um, it's my belief, as many of the guests on this program have expressed as well, that we are continuously and constantly receiving messages in one form or another another from those very spirits and loved ones. How do we recognize those messages? 
Oh, it's it's so good. It's like all right. So ma- mainly the main ones are um, pennies or dimes, cardinals, um, blue jays, uh, robins, um, butterflies, dragonflies, um, ladybugs, uh, feathers, songs on the radio, hearts in random places, hearts in clouds, angels in clouds. Um, you know, a stranger coming up to you and saying exactly what you needed to hear. You know what I mean? Or, or say you're feeling really depressed and all of a sudden a stranger in the, in wherever, in the store, in the drugstore says, you're so beautiful. Or, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, sometimes it's just, it, and they're always present in our lives. Always present. And they come, they go where they're needed. All right, so say there's like, you know, a bunch of family members, they can be there at the seat of thought, but they're, they go where they're needed the most, you know, and they try to like kind of, they've, they've shown me them putting their hands on our shoulders to try to calm us down or soothe us or try to point us in the right direction without really interfering in our free will. But I tell everybody, communicate with them. Talk to them out loud. They love it. They love it. I had a, I had a client. Um, she uh, she had a record label. I, I'm not going to say her name, but she, she I had a client, and uh, I brought her mother through. Now, I didn't know that her mom had passed in October, and this was the week between Christmas and New Year's. So I'm bringing her mother through, and the mother said to me, ask her about the turkey baster. <sighs> Okay, so I said, listen, I go, your mom wants me to ask you about the turkey baster. She started laughing and crying. She goes, this was my first Thanksgiving without my mother. She said, and my mother always did the turkey. She said, so here I am in my kitchen screaming at my husband going, we don't even own a turkey baster. (laughs) (laughs) The mom was letting her know that she was there with her and she heard her say that. So, yeah, I always tell everybody, communicate with them because they love to hear you talk. Do you believe that dreams serve as a mode of communication? Sure. Oh, yes. Yes. Spirit will visit you in dreams. Yes. Because it's it's less scary that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would you think it's one of the more common ways that we're we're communicating? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. What do you say to somebody who's lost a loved one who is desperately trying to dream of that person but hasn't or, or won't maybe? I tell them to ask, ask for them, Uh, keep a pen and paper by the side of the bed because, you know, we are human, so sometimes we forget, like you forget your dreams 10 seconds after you wake up sometimes, you know what I mean? But that's not really a dream, it's a visit. You can usually tell the difference. Um, It's just a knowing, like, oh, mom was there and she hugged me, you know what I mean? It's not like a dream of, you know, something that happened before or or something, you know, ridiculous. It's usually very calm and very straightforward. Like mom was there, she was hugging me, she wanted to tell me she loved me, or she just wanted to say hi. Um, so uh, I, I tell my clients, talk to them out loud, ask for what you want. Mom, please come to me in a dream. I, re- I asked my dad, like, and I could see my dad at will. Dad, step forward, I need to talk to you. But you know what? I wanted to I wanted to have a conversation with him like like old times, okay? So I said, please come to me in a dream. And it was a couple nights later, and we were in a parking lot, and we were walking, and he was punching me in the arm, and he's going, hey, kid, hey, kid, right? And he's punching me in the arm, and I go, Dad, I'm like, you look great. How are you? And he's like, I'm great. I'm riding my motorcycle over here. There's no more chemo. And it was beautiful. And I knew it was a visit. So you have to ask, you know what I mean? But also ask, but don't ask if you're not ready for the outcome. Because if you ask, they, see, they know, spirit will know whether they can communicate with you or not, whether it's going to freak you out or not, because they don't want to hinder your life. You know what I mean? They don't want to mess with your head. If right. this is something that's going to be bad for you, they're not going to come. They're not gonna. They know better than I do, and they know better than you do. You talked early in the discussion about how you dealt with, in the beginning, and I think you were dealing with this gift. Eventually you learned how it was a blessing and not a curse. But how do you advise other people who maybe 
in the process of that quote unquote dealing process. They don't maybe they don't understand it. Maybe they're hearing messages and they think you know that they've got uh, something wrong with them. Uh, how do you advise people like that? You mean people who who have gifts or just regular um, random people that are getting messages from their loved? Well, it could be both. I was thinking specifically about people that have gifts and haven't learned how to okay. do how to how to work with them, Honestly, but also the other truth, people do. Yeah, the truth. Study, take classes, take courses, find somebody reputable, take a mentorship program, read, go on YouTube, learn, absorb, create a rapport with your spirit guide. Meditate. Meditate every day if you can. Listen, you don't need to meditate for an hour every day. Meditate for 10 minutes. If you could do 10 minutes three times a week, you're golden. You're far better off than if you didn't do 10 minutes three times a week. Trust me. Does taking a nap Does taking a nap uh, uh, no. count as meditating? <laughs> no, sorry, it doesn't. Oh, no. darn it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, it's, it's just putting in the attention, intentions, putting in the work. Put the work in. If you, if you want to learn, put the work in. I love my students. I have, I have a mentorship program. I take six students a year. I, I love my students. You know what I mean? It's it's I because when I listen to my students, I hear myself ten years ago going, I don't know how to do that. How do I turn it on and turn it off? Honestly, you just listen. You're in the bathroom. Some stranger walks in the bathroom. You're on the bowl. Okay, what are you going to do? You're going to tell them to leave, right? So when you're not ready to turn that switch on and spirit steps forward, you just ask them to leave. You're in control always. And that's the key. Knowing that is the power to exercise it. 100%. Yes. Yeah. And and don't like don't give in to the negative so much. I just refuse it. I refuse. You know, I don't want to entertain even in humans. I don't like. No, I'm good. I don't do the drama. I don't do that. I don't. I don't do that. I try to keep myself very peaceful. We're almost out of time here. You mentioned uh, an Amazon Prime show. What's what's this about now? It's called Truth or Legends. Um, it's going to be on Amazon Prime in the fall. Um, I'm going to put all the details on my website once I once it gets closer. Um, you know, once I learn a little more about when it's going to air, I can definitely put the details on my website or my Facebook page. Um, is or this YouTube. is this a a, a film a, a series? It, it's actually um, they're they're interviewing paranormal investigators, um, doing like you know legendary places like like investigating like the S K Pierce Mansion, which right. is the second most haunted place in Massachusetts, which I just learned. So they're interviewing all of these different paranormal teams from all over Massachusetts, Jersey, New York, whatever, all over, and they. They ask them, do you think, is this true? Is this the second most haunted place in Massachusetts? Is it truth or is it just a legend? So it's up to us to, to discover, is it really true or is it, you know, because most paranormal investigators are there to debunk things. Well, if, you know they're, I mean? if they're good, that's what they're there to do. Right. Um, so, so in order to answer that question, do you actually do the investigation? Is that part of the I process? Did, well, I did. I did the investigation with them, but I didn't work with, like, spirit boxes or anything mm -hmm. like that. I don't mm -hmm. know how that equipment works, although I find it fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, all I did was do my thing. I just kind of walked around the place with uh, the camera behind me, and I had the woman, Marion. Um, she is the tour guide over there. She's been there forever. She knows the place like the back of her hand, and she, she's very knowledgeable about it. And um, everything that I gave her, she validated. I had a little girl step forward. I had a little boy step forward. Um, I asked the little girl how she passed away. All of a sudden, I felt this fever come over me, like I had the flu. I, I told Marion what I was feeling. She goes, she died from the flu. And then the little boy, I said, how did you pass away? And he grabbed me by the hand, and he brought me over to the window, and he pointed out. And I go, he's pointing out the window. She goes, he got hit by a car in the street. So everything that I that they told me, she validated. Wow. You know what I mean? So it so we gave it a truth stamp because it was true. You know, it wasn't a legend. It was actually all these things were true. So it should be good. Yeah, should it be. sounds it sounds like it will be. Uh, and you said that that uh, comes out in the fall. Yes. 
next okay. year. All right. Your website is halo-readings.com. I know that you said that on the website people can book a, a private session with you. Are you booked out away? How, how, how difficult is it to get a session? You can always get me because you know what? I add on so many hours like every week. I'm like, you know what? I can do this and I could, I'm just called like I feel like I'm just pulled to it, so I just add on things, and I always try to fit people in. I mean, it, it's it's fine. You can always, you know, you'll get in. It's not a problem. And uh, anything else on the website you want people to take a special note of? Um, if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, that would make me happy. <laughs> oh, yeah, what do you do? What do you do on YouTube? Um, I talk about spirit. I, I do quick 10 minute videos, and I talk about what happens when we die, and like I answer all the questions that you have asked me, but in quick 10-minute videos. So it's like some people want to know, like they just lost a loved one. What happens when we die? You know what I mean? And then I get to tell you. like, So you feel like you get a little closure from these little little quick videos. Wow. Um, that, that sounds great. What was the YouTube address? It's just uh, Denise Marie Psychic Medium. Denise Marie Psychic Medium. Well, it's been a great uh, 90 minutes or so, uh, Denise. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I had a great time. Oh, I had the best time. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll have you back on at some point. Uh, I know that you're in contact with my producer, so uh, we'll look forward to having you back on the show at some point. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much again. Beyond Reality Paranormal is hosted by J.V. Johnson and produced by Orion Palmer and Slick Eddie Edwards. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please consider supporting the program either through your podcast platform, click on the link in the description, or on Patreon at Joha Productions. If you'd like to be a guest on Beyond Reality Paranormal or you have a recommendation for a guest, contact our producer, Slick Eddie Edwards. Eddie is spelled with a Y at slickeddieedwards at gmail.com.